The Mercedes S-Class, the world's best-selling full-sized luxury saloon, has always stood for the ultimate in automotive opulence. This seventh generation version is one of the most advanced motor cars the Stuttgart maker has ever built and aims to redefine exactly what modern luxury means for this very different age. No longer is an S-Class merely about comfort, refinement and performance. This Mark 7 W223 series model also prioritises electrification, digitalisation and connectivity. There's never been a boardroom level luxury saloon quite like it. On the move there's still nothing quite like the serenity and elegance of an S-Class and the cruising experience on offer here remains a particularly special one, even by the opulent standards of the boardroom segment. Uh, exemplary ride quality remains this model's absolutely key calling card, even better this time around, and that's thanks to the way that the Airmatic Air Springs interact with the heavily re-engineered MRA modular rear architecture platform. The super slippery 0.22 CD drag factor ensures that highway refinement is class leading too, which is where you can make uh, use of this segment's best developed level two autonomous driving tech, uh, Mercedes Active Distance Assist Distronic System, which works with active steering assist to basically look after steering, throttle and braking duties for you at cruising speeds. Uh, the car has been engineered for level three and level four tech too, basically driving itself without you uh, for when uh, legislation permits that to actually happen. For now though you might be happy to enjoy driving it yourself uh, even in town where this Mercedes eases itself through urban jams on a different plane to the motoring masses. Uh, beneath the bonnet all S-Class variants bound for our market feature inline six cylinder three litre power. Uh, the options beginning with the 286 horsepower S350D diesel rear driven variant that we're trying here. The same engine features with 330 horsepower mated to 4 Matic all-wheel drive in the S400D or there's a 435 horsepower petrol power plant in the S500 4 Matic which benefits from the brand's current EQ Boost mild hybrid tech. That AMG derived petrol unit also forms the basis for the alternative plug-in model, the S580E, which uses it in 367 horsepower form and mates it with a 150 horsepower electric motor. That offers an impressive 63 mile all electric driving range too. Top Mercedes Maybach variants get either a 503 horsepower 4 litre V8 or for the embarrassingly wealthy, a 612 horsepower 6 litre V12. Sticking with this S350D though will keep your running costs nicely in check. Uh, this variant is able to return up to 42.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 173 grams per kilometre of CO2. People all around the world can recognise an S-Class right away. It's elegant styling, ever an expression of luxury and the automotive grandeur of the era. Mercedes has often described S-Class design as progressive, but in truth, it hasn't always been. And it can't be to any great extent now, because what you and I would describe as a progressive look for a car of this kind is now championed by the car that has to sell alongside this one in the company's showrooms, the all-electric EQS. That leaves the S-Class targeting the more traditionalist boardroom buyers. Uh, these are people who will appreciate the classic cues provided here to a heritage which extends all the way back to this model line's roots in 1951. Unlike with the EQS, what you get here is a classical saloon silhouette, regardless of your choice of body style, the standard S-Class or the even grander Mercedes-Maybach version. There are no longer coupe or cabriolet body style options. If you want the short wheelbase, 5.18 metre long saloon body shape, you'll have to limit yourself to a lower spec S-Class variant. Otherwise, you'll be getting the long wheelbase version, which is 110 millimetres lengthier. Headlamps characterise the frontal look of any car, and they certainly do so here, this time with a flatter, smaller, three-point daytime running light signature. Further up the range, the beams come fitted with the brand's latest digital light technology, as in this case, designated by this blue pixelated lower silver panel, which uses 2.6 million adaptive pixels and enables the beams to project warning signs as well as light onto the road ahead. 
of the rear, a total width measurement now just shy of two metres is emphasised by this chrome strip at the upper edge of these two section LED tail lights, which widens below the brand badge. And lower down, chrome framed twin tailpipes confirm that you've resisted the temptation to choose an EQS. All of which leaves you wondering just what might await you inside. Everything is new here, everything is different. The design objective being the ultimate harmonization of digital and analog luxury. If you thought the cabin of a 7 Series, an A8, or even a Bentley Flying Spur was cutting edge, well, think again and try one of these. Here, instead of merely admiring acres of wooden leather, your eyes are inexorably drawn to the next level screen tech, the 3D digital dials, which can be selected on most models from this 12.3 uh, inch driver's display and a huge 12.8 inch central OLED display that seems to float ahead of the center stack. Buy and way up the range and there are some lovely tech touches like the clever MBUX interior assist setup which anticipates your needs when you reach for things. Uh, the energizing comfort system with its soothing light, graphic, music and massage based themes. Uh, the largest head up display that you'll have ever seen and also the superbly comfortable Nappa leather trimmed seats which uh, in their plushest forms gain these little extra comfort headrest cushions. There are a few design issues, for example the way that the big central screen here has pushed the centre vents away from you, uh, reflections on the screen and a bit too much shiny black plastic, but otherwise what we've got here is a luxury cabin masterclass. Right, time to take a seat in the rear, where as at the front, the doors open very wide. That's especially if you've got the long wheelbase body style we're trying here. Inside, of course, it's very nice indeed. As you'd expect, there's more legroom than you could possibly need. At first glance, with the central armrest down, uh, it looks almost like there are two individual seats back here. Actually, rather surprisingly, for a limo in this class, from launch, you couldn't have that format as an option with the seventh generation S-Class. In fact, you couldn't even have it with a Mercedes Maybach unless you went for the exorbitantly priced first class version. What you do get though is standard, uh, providing you avoid entry level trim, are rear seats which electrically adjust and feature the lovely pillow-like luxury head restraints that we mentioned in the front. Seat heating and four zone climate control are fitted across the range and plusher variants like the one we have here uh, get upholstery climate control too and heated armrests. Let's finish by taking a look in the boot, the lid for which is of course power operated. Uh, the space you get inside uh, varies with the variant you choose, but across the range the cargo base is notably deep. With a diesel variant like this one you get 540 litres, that's 30 litres more than the previous generation model offered. That's 35 litres more than the Audi A8 and 25 litres more than the BMW 7 Series. Because the S500 4Matic petrol version doesn't need to incorporate this diesel model's extra tank of AdBlue additive. Capacity in that variant rises to 550 litres, but as you might fear, cargo space plummets with the S580e plug-in hybrid to just 325 litres. For reference, a standard Mercedes Maybach model has 505 litres of capacity, that falls to 495 with the individual rear seat configuration of the top first class variant. Unlike with an E-Class, you can't have folding seat backs. Mercedes instead gives us this oversized ski hatch, although unfortunately you can't open that from the boot. You can only lock it from here. Uh, there are two boot area LED lights and red lamps integrated into the leading edge of the boot hatch for safety when you're unloading at night. This S-Class spearheads technological development not only for Mercedes-Benz but for the automotive industry as a whole and it has done for decades. It's that important. No other rival has as difficult or as wide-ranging a brief but then no other car brings this one's timeless clarity and effortless superiority to such an advanced and wide-ranging portfolio of talents.
It can power to supercar speeds the Mercedes AMG guys. It can deliver an average of over 40 miles per gallon in this volume mainstream S350D diesel form. And it can be specified to eerily steer, power and brake itself for the cruise in whatever form you decide on. Yes, other rivals may look more avant-garde or handled with a touch more involvement. In overall terms, though, Mercedes has done enough here to enable this S-Class to remain a benchmark for the kind of luxury saloon that every prestige brand would like to build. As it always was, it's a reference point for the current state of automotive technology. The best car in the world? Well, you'll feel like it is if you choose one.